this is the Sun and like all the other planets our planet Earth goes around it Newton's universal law of gravitation explains that motion however Isaac Newton could not determine the mass of the Sun because he didn't know the universal gravitational constant G since Cavendish we know what G is. G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed divided by kilogram divided by second squared. With this constant it is possible to determine the mass of the Sun. The Sun of course is much larger than depicted here. We'll find it is it has a mass that is 3 times 10 to the 5 times larger than the mass of the Earth. How do we work this out? Let's move the Earth into a convenient spot, maybe over here. Then we can argue that the centripetal force that keeps the Earth on this almost circular orbit in fact in reality it's slightly elliptical that that centripetal force is provided for by the gravitational attraction of the Sun which according to Newton is equal to G the universal gravitational constant G times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Sun these symbols are the astronomical symbols for Earth and Sun divided by the distance R squared. We also know that in general centripetal force is mass of the moving object which is the mass of the Earth times its linear speed v squared divided by the radius of the orbit. Now we see that we have the earth mass on both sides so we can take out the earth mass and we obtain a simplified equation which is v squared on r is equal to g times solar mass divided by r squared. That can be rearranged so that we isolate the solar mass as m solar equal to radius of the orbit r times linear speed of the earth squared divided by g. How do we work out this linear speed v? Well we know the earth goes around the sun over 365 days and the circumference of this orbit is 2 pi r whereby r is the distance between Sun and Earth so we can write v is equal to 2 pi r divided by t the period t one year is equal to 365 days times 24 hours times 3600 3, seconds and uh, if we now substitute we find that the solar mass is therefore equal to 4 pi squared times 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters cubed there is two r's coming from here via the v squared and another r is already there which gives us the cube and we're dividing by g which is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed divided by kilogram divided by second squared and if we then substi substitute for t which goes in squared we write 365 
times 24 times 3600, 3600 seconds squared. And we can type this into the calculator and obtain a solar mass of 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. We can convince ourselves that the uh, unit is correct, that indeed we have obtained a mass by selecting all the units we've got here. So we've got m cubed divided by m cubed divided by kilogram second squared and there's another second squared there. If we cancel appropriately, this cancels, this cancels with that and because the kilogram is in the denominator it moves up so that we obtain kilogram. This result is really interesting because it tells us that the solar mass is 3 times 10 to the 5, so almost a million times larger than the mass of our planet Earth.